Hello and welcome back to the circuit, Ricardo Tormo here in Valencia, Spain. A classic layout, of course, the traditional home of the finale of the MotoGP World Championship. And it's been with us in the Junior GP paddock ever since it opened back in 1999. A four kilometer layout, nine left turns, five right turns, a nice 0.8 kilometer front straight for these guys to have a little bit of slipstream and a run down into turn one. Plenty of overtaking moves. Seen some of them flash up there on your screen. Most notably turns one, turns two, the final corner, of course, down into turn eight. And as I just drop something on the floor, just collect that and pick that up. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Beautiful skies, not a cloud in sight here in Valencia. I say not a cloud in sight, there's a few clouds ruining the picture a little bit, but we are all good to go here. Beautiful conditions, arguing a little bit too warm for the riders. A lot of them have been saying this weekend it's the pace has been a little bit slower because of the heat creating a little bit of grease on the surface makes things a little bit slippery we see it don't we that when the heat starts to rise a little bit too much it gets to a certain point where it's a little bit too much and the lap times do drop we saw it across qualifying yesterday in the afternoon no one really was able to improve their time from the morning the morning was pretty much perfect mid-20s lower track temperature so the second qualifying session couldn't really be used as a proper qualifying session could it of course it is a qualifying session and the riders are going to be pushing but especially for the motor two riders with only one race today the race coming up right now uh, the later proceedings after the red flag in moto sorry in the Euro Hawkers european talent cup but here is a look back at what happened in estoril and it was lucas tulevic starting from pole position and that was a very very scary crash indeed for tomaso Marcon for the middle of the second row thankfully he was all okay. A few bruises, of course, and a bit beaten up, but he will be on the grid today, starting from fifth place again. Thankfully, all okay for Tommaso Mark on. That's Hector Garzo crashing out the returnee. Very experienced rider in this class, but it was all about Lucas Tulovic in race one. Finally, a race winner in the Moto2 European Championship. And starting from pole again in race two, we saw a little bit of drama on lap one at turn one. That was Sam Wilford making a good start after his penalty in the first race. And unfortunately, it was red flagged uh, race two because Sam Wilford suffered a very, very scary incident indeed. Fortunately for Sam, we wish him a get well soon. Lucas Tulovic going on to win the race. But yeah, Sam Wilford unfortunately crashing at turn three. It was a terrifying crash. Um, thankfully, well, it... Could it have was been much worse, basically, it? it could have been much worse, yeah. It could, it's the best it could have been, really. It was a proper whack into the wall. Tried to save a front end washout, and yeah, just one of them freak incidents, really. But of course, Sam, not here this weekend. He's had surgery on his shoulder and his leg, and I think in his back as well, back in uh, Barcelona. So Sam Wilford won't be racing here for the British fans tuning in. Uh, we wish Sam Wilford a very get well soon indeed, and I'm sure we'll be seeing him at some point this year as he continues his recovery. But yeah, double race win for Lucas Tulovic. Pit lane will open in about three minutes time at 10 past one local time. We did have a, a red flag in the Hawkers European Talent Cup race. So that's why we've got a little bit of a delay to proceedings if you're tuning in and expecting us to be 10 minutes into the Moto2 race. That's why we're not at the minute. But yeah, should be a good race, Liam. The only race of the day here in Moto2. They had two races, of course, back in Estoril. Tulovic had a good advantage over Nestoril, didn't we? He was the favourite going into the race, of course, of course, starting from pole. You naturally go into the race as one of the favourites. But he hasn't quite got the advantage he has in Valencia than he did over in Estoril. So this is going to be a fascinating battle, hopefully, as for the neutrals um, for the race win. As you say, yeah, hopefully a good battle. And as the weekend has been looking, it's shaping up to be a cracker of a race here today in the Moto2 race with... Well, Lucas Tulovic, he is on pole position, but he has been, well, out of the top three, he hasn't been the quickest in every single session. We've had Alex Krieg, we've had Senna Aegis as well, also swapping fastest times and fastest laps in every single session. So between those three, it's going to be absolutely cracking because, well, Alex Krieg has been on form uh, since yesterday afternoon. He's top morning warm-up as well. He was fast yesterday in the hot conditions. And Senna Aegis was second in morning warm-up as well. So it's setting, the stage is set for an absolute cracker between those three. I can't really see anyone else challenging them for the podium, to be honest. Yeah, it's difficult to see, isn't it? The top three, 
sort of in a cast of their own this weekend. Um, we've obviously seen in the years gone by in the Moto European Championship, there's normally a few standout riders. Last year it was Fermin Aldeguer, the eventual champion, and Alonso Lopez, his teammate in the Bosco Scuria team. They've obviously now gone on to pastures new Fermin Aldeguer, full-time rider in the Moto2 World Championship, and of course Alonso Lopez now joining him alongside him in the Moto two World Championship. So, yeah, if you do well in this class, um, there's a definite pathway into uh, the Moto two World Championship. At the end of the day, this is what uh, this class is here for. It's allow young riders to build their skills on a Moto two bike. We often see, don't we, that some riders who maybe grow a little bit quicker than others, who are a little bit tall for the Moto three and European Talent Cup bikes, that they come into this class. Center Ages is certainly one of them. And they able to prove a little bit more their skills on a bigger bike, let's say. We saw it with Fermin Aldeguer, didn't we? Alonso Lopez coming in from Moto3 and uh, winning a couple of races at the end of last year as well. So, yeah. We were talking about this yesterday um, when we were watching it on the track there. It, it's a, if you're a tall rider, then in Moto3 it can be quite difficult because of your height and your weight as well. So it goes against you. So you might not think that you've got too much hope in your career, but then Moto2 has given some riders like Fermin Aldeguer another chance uh, to resurrect their career, even though he was very young, but he took a different pathway through into the World Championship, through Moto2, not the the conventional one, which is the Moto3, and that's what Lucas Tulovic has wanted to do as well. Yeah, this is the qualifying practice review then from yesterday, and we can hear from Lucas Tulovic now. qualifying and it was incredibly fast but also I have to put my head to, to S3 and also Senna, also Gasso, they, they are not too far and for sure it will be really interesting tomorrow in the race but we are there, we have a, we have a good speed, we have a strong pace, feeling with the bike is fantastic and uh, it will be a good fight tomorrow in the race. So yeah, Lucas Tulovic then starting from pole position once again. Claimed pole in Estoril, started of course both races there from pole and converted those into his first race wins. This is actually his first pole position, Liam, that isn't in Estoril. Estoril was a favoured track of his. He had three pole positions previously there and now he's finally taken one in the Moto2 European Championship. It's not as Estoril, so Lucas Tulovic has come out of the box flying in uh, 2022, looking really good on that. Um, Triumph Calex machine. We've got a mix of Triumph triple cylinder machines that we see in the Moto2 World Championship. We've got some Honda four cylinders that have stayed around and we've got the Super Stock 600 class as well. So a nice mix of bikes on the grid. Um, the Triumph bikes are naturally a little bit quicker um, than the rest of them. So keep an eye on that. They've got a bit of a um, straight line speed um, advantage. But yeah, Lukas Tulovic, Estoril double, his first wins in the European Moto2 class started 57 races in this class so it took him a while to get um, those race wins under his belt but finally the pressure is now off and he can start relaxing a little bit not having the burden of winning races he was third last year in the Moto2 European Championship finished behind um, the aforementioned Fermin Aldeguer the champion and Alonso Lopez who completely dominated last year it was one of them two winning or finishing um Alonso Fopez had one third place, actually, I think. But, yeah, they pretty much dominated the whole season. Um, but, yeah, Lukas Tulovic now acts as the favourite pole position once again here in the Moto2 European Championship. Yes, with uh, Fermin Aldeguer and Alonso Lopez making their way to the World Championship, he now takes up the baton as the favourite, and he's, well, carrying it very, very well at the moment. Back-to-back -back wins in Estoril, puts himself in pole position, and he goes well around the Valencia circuit. He took third here at the end of 2021 as well. So he's definitely got his set set, his set set on, well, a triple win to start off the 2022 season. Yeah, it took Paul and Estoril by just under half a second, did Lukas Tulovic. Now, Alex Eskrieg, who we're going to see very shortly on the number 11 bike, you can just see there, was less than a tenth away from um, uh, Lukas Tulovic's time in qualifying. 
Alex Escrig, the 2021 Super Sock 600 champion. He won 10 out of 11 races in that class last year. And that seventh place in Estoril, well, he was on for a podium, challenging for a podium, but unfortunately got a double long lap penalty in race two. So that cost him a chance of going for a podium. He jumped the start um, in race two. So, yeah, if you jump the start, unfortunately, that's a double long lap penalty you have to take. And that really pretty much ruins your race, doesn't it? Not completely ruins it, depending on what pace you've got, of course, but the race win after two long lap penalties is really out of the equation. It is indeed. We've seen in Moto3 that if you get a double long lap penalty, it doesn't necessarily ruin your race, but Moto2, with just precision, every single corner, every single lap, and the bikes are just so torquey. It's, it's a little bit difficult to regain that time, and with the time so close as well, Gaining a tenth here, there, and everywhere. One mistake can completely ruin that, and obviously a double long lap penalty, which can be up to three seconds or maybe even more um, per lap. It just puts you out of contention completely as well. But one point I'd like to make is Alice Greek was fastest yesterday in the conditions that are more representative of the time we're racing today. So he was 0.5 seconds slower than his morning time, but that was much quicker than everyone else in the second session. So. He is the man on form, and he could be the one to look out for, especially as the as the, the track temperatures come up. Yeah, it's a good point, because these conditions are pretty much representative of what we saw in the second part of qualifying yesterday, isn't it? You're right in saying that, Liam. We saw Senna Aegis there on the outside of the front row in third place. Now, he is a rider that no one really expected to come in and start doing as well as he had done. He's come from... Um, the Moto3 Junior World Championship last year, he scored three points there, but he's stepped onto a Moto2 bike and he's been super, super impressive. You saw on your screens a double P2 finish in Estoril, started um, on the front row there as well. And yeah, a rookie coming into Moto2, it's the point we made a little bit earlier, isn't it, Liam, that they're maybe not quite able to show their true potential on a smaller bike, but Senna Aegis has stepped up onto a Moto2 bike and he's absolutely fantastic the Australian he's absolutely incredible as you're saying it's impressive what he's doing because he was sort of a journeyman basically in Moto3 and you would think that well he would just ride off into distance we'd never hear from him again but he's come in Moto2 and he is a star performer one of the best out there at the moment he's taking the whole paddock completely by surprise but we must remember he's got an immense amount of talent and he's native Australia he's a 14 time dirt track champion so you don't win 14 of those championships without uh, having some talent behind you. Talent in abundance, and he's got Leon Camia in his corner as well. They both live in Andorra, of course. Leon Camia heads up the Team HRC outfit in World Superbikes. A British champion is Leon Camia, well known to our British fans out there. So, yeah, St. Aegis, one to look out for. We'll just look back onto row two, which is led by Javi Cardelus, uh, the um, experienced Andorran. DNF and P5 in Estoril for Cardelus. He was involved in an incident with Piotr Bershikovsky, um, who we've just seen on our screens now at Turn 1. That brought out the initial red flags in Race 1 back in Estoril, but good to see Piotr Bershikovsky fit and well after that heavy crash at Turn 1. Tommaso Marcon, another one we can say it's good to see him fit and healthy after that terrifying crash just off the start over in Estoril. Tommaso Marcon will start from 5th. Roberto Garcia will start from sixth. And then, yeah, Piotr Biscus, who we've just seen, will start from the front of row seven. He was 13th in 2021, had some mangina problems in 2021, did Biscus, so he missed a part of the season, finished 13th overall, and his best finish so far in the class is P5. So starting from P7, Biscus, the pole, he can aim for a top five at least today, can't he? He, that can indeed. It's a bit of a shame that uh, what happened to him in Estoril race one because he was on course for, well, if not a podium, a fourth spot, which would have been his best result in Moto2. But for that uh, collision towards the end of race number one, it put him out of race number two as well. But it's good to see him back. And the pole is definitely on course for, well, a top five uh, finish today. So we have to see how that goes. In eighth spot, we just saw him there, was uh, Mattia Ratto, who took... Uh, a second, uh, first podium in race number two in Estoril with third spot. So he's someone that's definitely come on form in 2022 as well. So keep an eye out for the Italian there. And Ad Eduardo Montero. Now, he had a 
brace of ninth place finishes in Estoril, but that's uh, some some of his best riding he's done in well the whole of the Junior GP categories as well. So he's uh, someone that's definitely on form, picking up um, some confidence as well, and it's his best qualifying of the year by some way in ninth spot as well. So ninth position is very much earmarked to Eduardo Monteros, but he won't want to be keeping that. He'll be wanting to move a little bit higher up in the race. Yeah, absolutely. Qualified 13th, didn't he? Did Montero in Estoril, and he's competed in the uh, World Supersport Championship and the Spanish Superbike Superbot class. Um, he was fourth overall last year. So yeah, Eduardo Montero going from the outside of row three. Now here's Yare Ruiz. Some of you may recognise the name because he's competed in the FIM NL Motorway World Cup this year over in Jerez. Stood in. I think it was for Bradley Smith, I think. Um, Bradley Smith, obviously, out injured at the minute. But, yeah, he was... Ruiz was 13th and 10th back in Estoril. Finished 16th as a best in Moto E. It's never easy going from uh, the Moto 2 bike across to Moto E, the electric bike. It's obviously a completely different kettle of fish. Um, yeah, diffi a, a difficult task. So, 16th... Can't really ask much more than that, can you, on your debut weekend? Absolutely not. It, it makes it more impressive. Um, what you can do is switching back from Moto E to Moto 2 and take like both of them like a duck to water. It's uh, incredibly impressive and it cannot be underestimated how well or how tough that transition will be. Absolutely. Alex, Alex Toledo then. He just missed out on a podium in Estoril by the slimmest of margins in race two. A pair of P4s. He's starting from 11th on the grid he was 10th last year a best of sixth a couple of times so with two p4s in estoril he's already beaten that record early doors in 2022 here's angelo tagliarini the italian as you can see there he was eighth nice top 10 in race one and then just finished outside the top 10 in p11 in round one he qualified 12th in estoril as well so he's back that up with another 12th place here and he'll have his sights on another top 10 at least will tagliarini is the mechanics wheel away the parts and spare wheels etc from the grid and we will shortly be underway here in moto 2 for their only race of the day leading them off the line once again is lucas tulevich the number three Interesting to see what the graphic says with the temperature um, as we're just going to get a rundown of the grid for race one of one here in Valencia for the Moto2 riders. So it will be Lucas Tulovic from pole position from Alex Escrig and St. Aegis, the front row. Card loose, Mark on and Garcia is row two. Bishop Kersey, Rato and Montero is your third row. Further back on the fourth row, we have Yeri Ruiz as uh, a top 10 beckons for him. He hopes for this race ahead of Toledo and Taglarini with Rodriguez starting off row number five ahead of Mikhail Pons, a previous winner in Moto E. Further back, we have the Stock 600 rider. That is Strudwick and 19th spot ahead of Florov and Iotso running at row number seven. Van der Lagmat is in 22nd ahead of Rahicek. And then further back as the last raider on the grid is Shiba, the German raider. Now, a little bit of housekeeping as we start off this Moto2 race. You may have missed a name, the, a name that has been synonymous with uh, Moto2 over the course of the last few years is Hector Garzdo. Now, he won't be riding here today because he had a bit of a crash yesterday uh, in qualifying practice one. Now, his time was fast enough to qualify him in fourth spot, but he had um, a bit of pain in his leg yesterday so he'll be missing today's racing action but we wish him all the best and a speedy return for the next round yeah absolutely we're told it's nothing serious for Hector Garzo so hopefully we'll be seeing him back in action in a few weeks time when the Moto2 European Championship along with the Junior GP and Walker's European Talent Cup head to Barcelona in the middle of June so yeah get well soon to Hector Garzo and we'll repeat it get well soon as well to Sam Wilford after his crash in Estoril. So 31 degrees then here. It's the height of the afternoon, half one, just before half one local time, three mile an hour winds, very hot. warm, <laughs> good conditions, not quite perfect. A little bit cooler would be perfect for these guys, but yeah, these are, these are good conditions to go racing in. The sun is shining. 
over Valencia and hopefully we've got a good race on our hands because we mentioned the top three were pretty close in qualifying. Senegis was half a second down on Lucas Tulovic's time, but once we get into a race, then we'll really see what they're made of. Alex Eskrieg and Lucas Tulovic have the edge, it seems, but we'll wait and see what happens over the next 19 laps. We can indeed hear are the championship standings. So Tulovic, 50 points, two out of two from the first two races ahead of Aegis, who took up a brace of second spots and Rattle in third. So there's a uh, lot to look out for all the way down the grid. So many riders this season have just come out of the blocks charging after they've uh, maybe not had such an impressive 2021, but this year they're putting that right. And Rattle, like many others, is one of those riders as well. So the riders make the way around the final part of the lap, the warm-up lap here for race number three of the day. This is Moto2 action, their only race of the weekend. And they will be peeling up to the grid any moment now with your championship leader, Lucas Tulovic, on the Intact Racing Team Triumph will be leading away from Alexis Creek and Senna Aegis. Now, those three have been the class above so far this weekend in the morning conditions, the afternoon conditions. We talk about the conditions a lot because the track temperature does change considerably between the morning and the afternoon when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. Intriguing race awaits us then here in Valencia. Lucas Tulovic from pole position once again. Who's going to get the whole shot into turn one? That's Alex Skrieg, the number 11 bike. He'll be hoping to get a good start and ruin Lukas Tulovic's early... It's <laughs> a good way of putting it. <laughs> well, <laughs> early uh, rhythm, I was going to say. So, lights in the top corner. They're going to go out any second now, and we are underway, and it looks like a good start from the top two. Alex Skrieg getting away well, pulls out to the outside. Lukas Tulovic getting a good launch as well, but it's going to be Alex Eskrieg. What a start from the number 11. He is going to get the whole shot into turn one. Closely followed by Lukas Tulovic in that centre ages. So the front row there getting away well. Lukas Tulovic eyeing up a move up the inside into turn two and he's gone for it. Backs in nicely. So Alex Eskrieg didn't hold the lead for long and Alex uh, and centre ages, sorry, is going to have a little bit of that as well. So Alex Eskrieg, after getting the whole shot, has been overtaken by Tulovic and Aegis going into turn two and three. A very punchy opening start to this Moto2 lap, but also in fifth spot, Alex Toledo, what a start he's had. He's now up into fifth spot and chasing down the number 31 of uh, Roberto Garcia, who's also come up from sixth on the grid to fourth. So there's lots of riders making some progress in the early stages of this race here. But as they make their way down the back straight and to the left hander, as Senna is going to have a look. No, he's not. It's very tough to make a late braking maneuver, especially on these Moto2 bikes and to the left hander. Someone wide out there, that was Roberto Garcia. Not sure if he's lost any position there. He's not. He still holds fourth spot for now, but Alex Toledo is all over the back of the Spanish Raider as they make their way around the second half of this lap here. Of lap number one, race number, well, the only race of the Moto2, and there's already a gap opening up between the class of the field. The top three, Tulovic, Aegis, and Esquig. Yeah, not good news then for the likes of Roberto, Roberto Gossi, Alex Toledo, Thomas, Tommaso Marcon, because like you say, Liam, the top three are already stretching clear. We'll be interested to see what the gap is over the line. But a great first lap then for Lukas Tulovic. He will lead, but Senna Aegis is right up in his slipstream. So is Senna Aegis, the number eight to one, going to make a move down into turn one? No, thinks better of it this time around. Long way to go yet. There's, what is the gap? 1.1 seconds, just over a second after lap one. So yeah, the riders... Just down there, I've got a box clever led by Roberto Garcia. They've already let them get a second up the lead. So it's an uphill battle now in the chase for the podium for all these riders chasing down the number 11 of Alex Eskrieg and the top two of Lucas Tulovic and Senna Aegis. There's the number 55 of Alex Sado, like Salian, making a good start from 11th. That's exactly what he needed. What he didn't need was the top three to already be breaking clear. Yeah, the, the top three are already gone. Is uh, Toledo's looking up the inside of Garcia and he makes it stick. That was a lovely little move there into the left hander before they hit the back straight. But can Garcia fight back? Oh, they look very close there. <laughs> yeah, nearly wheel to wheel action. And coming around the outside, not a chance that's going to happen, but maybe well, he has done it. That is uh, Ruiz on the number 72, still trying to hold around the outside of the 31 of Garcia. And he's made it stick. I've never seen that happen before in any <laughs> class here. That's impressive. And he's going for fourth as well. So he's up the inside, round the outside of one raider, up the inside of another, and he's now up into fourth. He's going to push Whoa. them. Oh, they've touched. So 
Yeah, I thought he was going to make it stick there, but he hadn't. And we had Toledo, who was telling him, like, that's not going to happen today, Sunshine. <laughs> I'm keeping this full spot. Yeah, Rui's getting a little bit excited there, wasn't he? They've just got to be careful because they've already let a gap open up. It's up to about, yeah, 1.6 seconds now on lap two. So they can't, if they've got any podium ambitions, if the front three stay on, which they hopefully do for their sake, then these guys have got to really box clever and not battle away because what is the gap over the line? Yeah, they're 2.8 seconds, nearly three seconds down after two laps. So the podium hopes for these guys already fading and we've got 17 laps to go. But top three all locked together. Looks like we're going to have a fantastic race. Tulevic setting the fastest lap at 135.6, only slightly faster than Senna Ages and Alex Escriga. They were both in the 135.6. is two, turn four. Uh, uh, Senna Ages going up the inside. He leads for the first time here in Valencia. And it's the first time he's led. Oh, we've had a bit of a crash Ooh. further back. That is one wrecked bike. Not sure who that is, but um, yeah, that's uh, our tag, uh, uh going from well, the top of the, the grid. Yeah. yeah, so that's a shame for the Italian Raider. It was showing good form this weekend, but unfortunately, he's out of this race. But at back at the front, there's a bit of a gap opening up now. Aegis is stretching the gap between himself and Lucas Tulevic, with Alex Skrieg still holding firm there in third spot. But as you said, the gap back to fourth. They lost two seconds on that one lap with all the scrapping between uh, Toledo and Reed. So that allowed the top three, even though they were the fastest so far this weekend, to get even further ahead as we, well, we're in the middle. Oh, oh! Sages is down. No, he's gone out of the lead of the race. He was looking so good. He's just lost the front end there through turn number 12. Uh, that is gutting for the Australian rider who was leading the race for the first time in Moto2. So that's put Tulevic back into lead with a squeak all over the back ah. of the German rider. Oh, well, I can't believe it, Elliot. That was he was I looking was so just good about there, to wasn't say he? That he was pushing on. He'd got into the lead and he was just like you say, opening a little bit of a gap, but he was pushing a little bit too hard. You have to say with the crash. Ah, oh, so unfortunate for Senna Aegis, the rookie. Started so well, front row again trying to back up his double podium in Estoril and he's clearly frustrated. The main thing is Senerages is up and okay, but that is his race day over. Let's have a look then. They fire it out of turn 11, get on the anchors into turn 12 with the right-hander. Here we go then. What's going to happen? The front is going to wash away. Yeah, just a typical front-end crash. I mean, I've not really ridden a motorcycle at those speeds. Well, I say not really. <laughs> not at all have I ridden a motorcycle at end speeds, but just looks like your typical front-end wash, pushing a little bit too hard on the front brakes, going into the right-hander. Like I say, the main thing is Senna Aegis is okay, but clearly disappointed. He's thrown away a guaranteed podium, I have to say, if they stayed on. But now Lukas Tulovic is in the lead. Once again, he found himself in this position in Esseril. Put himself there, though, back there. Senna Aegis has crashed in front of him. Now Lukas Tulovic will have seen that, of course. And now he's just going to probably just be a little bit careful, knowing that it's a little bit slippery out there. Don't push too hard. His pit board would have told him that they've got a nice little gap down to, well, third place now. It was fourth place, third place. So what can Alice S. Grieg do then, the number 11, keeping in Lucas Tulovic honest as we round to complete another lap? There'll be 15 laps to go, a two-horse race for victory. So it's a really impressive raid from Alex S. Grieg, who has come up from the Stock 600 class uh, last year. This is only his third race on the big Moto2 machines, and he's already pushing the championship favourite, Lucas Tulovic, all the way. But it looks like... Lucas Tulovic maybe has something in hand. He just has that gap around about two tenths, two tenths of a second, lap on lap, sector on sector as well. So it's going to be tough for Alex Esquig to, well, put a glove on the championship leader at the moment. But further back, Yari Ruiz as well is opening up a gap over Alex Toledo, the number 55. So it's uh, starting to string out a little bit further down the order. But as we know, tyres could come into play later on in the race. Who's kept the tyres in the best condition? Who is maybe used their tyres up in the early stages of the race. You have to say, some of the riders have come from further back, like Ruiz, like Toledo, may have just done so. The important thing now is that is third place. So that's a podium for Ruiz at the minute. Alex Toledo chasing him close behind. The top two are well into the distance, 4.5 seconds, barring a disaster for these guys. Uh, that is the top two sorted. So yeah, it's a race for P1 and P2 between Tulovic and Eskrieg, and it's a race for now, the final podium spot. Yere Ruiz finished 13th and 10th back in Estoril, so just got into the top 10 in race two, so this will be by far his best result. Um, like we say, he was in Moto E at the beginning of the year in Jerez, and now he's demonstrating his skills on a Moto 2 bike. So yeah, this is great stuff 
from Yari Ruiz from 10th on the grid and Alex Salado from 11th on the grid. So yeah, like I say, Lewis, uh, Louis, Liam, sorry. <laughs> You've come from um, the back, well, the fourth row, start of the fourth row. And yeah, good progress in the early stages and now they've got a podium right in their grasp. Ruiz holding it so far, but there is a long way to go. And Roberto Garcia in fifth spot, he's already had uh, a top five finish here in Valencia. Picked that up at the end of last year, which is actually his best uh, result in the Moto2 class so far. So he's on course to be equal in that. But as I say, that he's just lost a position to Xavi Cardalus. So yeah, the number 18 is uh, making moves further up the field after a sort of so-so start to this race. He, yeah, he was holding a good position, but dropped back in early stages. So that's Cardalus back up to the top five and he's going a little bit quicker than the two men in front of him. He was a tenth of a second quicker than Toledo in fourth, and only a couple of hundreds quicker than Jair Ruiz in third. So then these two really have got the pace here to pull away. Their fastest laps are a good second and a bit quicker. There's a replay of <laughs> Sudovic just... Giving some motivation to his motorbike to Absolutely. get him to the line or get him to the flag. Here's a replay of the start then. Tulevic did get away well, but not as well as Alice Skrieg on the number 11 machine from second on the grid. Center age there, the number H1, unfortunately crashed out of the race lead a little bit earlier on. Slotted himself into P3. Roberto Garcia into P4 as the riders safely made their way round turn one. This was the lead trio pulled away, didn't they, right from the beginning. That's them coming through the fast kink of turn three they'll break into turn four usually we worry about tire temperatures there oh, as that's, that's roberto that's garcia and that is a hefty crash that's at turn 12 as well by the looks of it that's where um tenor just went down a few laps ago thankfully roberto garcia is all okay it looked yeah, so it looks yeah. like he's just gone down on the front end, the same as Senna Agius, and the bike's just had a bit of a tumble dry treatment in the gravel trap. So unfortunately for Roberto Garcia, who was running inside the top six, his race is now over. But the main thing is, again, that Roberto Garcia is okay as we have a change for the lead with 13 laps to go. It looks like they're cruising. Yeah, it looks like Esquig is setting up ever so slightly and looking over his yeah, shoulder for Tulevic. So is there some games going on here? It looks like... Uh, Looks like there's some games going on. They're really slowing up here. I'm not sure what's going on. We've not got any red flags coming on our timing no. screens. It looks like they've gone back to uh, full pace now. So that was yeah, a little bit weird, wasn't it? Not sure what's happened there. Alex Eskrieg maybe just <laughs> chilling out looking. <laughs> yeah. Where are the rest of them? I need yeah, some help here. But yeah, no, try, it's try not to back Tulevic into the, back, the rest of the pack there. Like I mean, if there was a championship on the line, um, I'd sort of understand a little bit of tactic to try and get some others into play, but we're only at round three. So, yeah, not sure what happened there. Uh, oh, here we'll we go. get a replay here. Into turn two they go. Uh, so that's is setting Tulevic up as well. cruising. Yeah, they're so far <laughs> a little wheelie from a squeak as well. It's like, yeah, What's going on, If you can play, I can play just as well. <laughs> I have no idea. I remember. That is weird. There was a once upon a time, a MotoGP race with a, a certain Alex Barros and Valentino Rossi doing the exact same thing here at Valencia. So, okay. yeah, maybe they're just uh, 20 years on, um, bringing that out to play as well. So it's a very weird thing that's going on here between Esquig and Tulevic. So, yeah, they've got a huge gap over the, the rest of the field, which has now come down by to four seconds. Well, I'm so. not surprised. They were just <laughs> celebrating like it was the like there was the last lap. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. We saw that actually um, between Alonso Lopez and Fermin Aldeguer in Jerez last year. I think um, they were obviously so far ahead, and it was just the two of them, obviously teammates. So, sort of Alonso Lopez had a look over Fermin Aldeguer had a look over, and the sort of playing a little bit of mind games maybe um, but yeah that was a bit weird not sure what they were doing but anyway they're yeah. back up to racing speed now Alex Eskrieg leading, leading from Lucas Tulovic the gap is still at just over four seconds so they've got nothing to worry about uh, doesn't look like they're looking behind them now so yeah answer on postcard guys <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there maybe you can hopefully ask the race winner when you go down later on Liam ask them what that was about yeah let's hope Who they both knows. make it to the lane to, so I can ask them <laughs> well oh we've had a oh no it's just a Juan Rodriguez, it's all going on out there now. I'm not <laughs> sure where to look anymore. So, yeah, Juan Rodriguez, Superstock 600 rider. And, well, oh, we've got someone running off the track. That looks like it could be down at turn number two. I'm not sure that is. That's the number 91. So that is uh, Florov, the number 91, who's uh, crashed at turn number two. So the Stock 600 rider, but he's back on the bike and back into the race. But cruising, not looking too happy with himself. And we'll see what's happened here. Yeah, just a front-end washout 
which is so easy to do at turn number two. Classic turn two crash, isn't it? Like you say, so easy to do, especially in these conditions, very hot, very humid, and so yeah, very greasy out there. We focused in on Juan Rodriguez, that's because he's leading the Superstock class at the minute, up into the top 10 on a Superstock bike. Uh, very well done from Juan Rodriguez. And as we see here, Alex Skrieg is starting to pull away from Lucas Tulovic. The gap is up to seven tenths of a second. So I'm not sure if Tulovic is just looking after his tyres, maybe 11 laps to go, no need to push at this stage of the race. Or maybe Alex Skrieg has just got the pace to pull away. We'll find out in the next few laps what the case is there. But yeah, Alex Skrieg, the number 11, doing a very, very good job here. Um, as we just turn our attention back to Juan Riga on the time screen. Yeah, he's beating Mikel Pons, of course, a Metal Wee front runner this year as well. So great job on the Superstop bike from Juan Rodriguez, the number 38 on the Cuna de Campeones machine. Yeah, it's indeed. And he's, uh, well, not quite closing on Pietro Piszczekowski, but the lap times are very close. A 38.3 from uh, Rodriguez and a 38.2 from Piszczekowski. So to be on the pace of someone of the caliber of Piszczekowski is just incredible from the Stock 600 rider. But back at the front, the gap is definitely opening up. That looks like it's more than a second now between Esquik and Tulovic now. So, well, a bit of a bobble there coming through turn number 13. Uh, just trying to take it a little bit easier than that, Alex. You're yeah, for your first one sure. as things stand at the moment. But Tulovic, maybe, maybe he just doesn't feel the pace. Like he saw the, he saw that Alex Esquik when he came past was just able to open it. Maybe he's just consolidating that position in the second, knowing he doesn't have to push too much. I know it's early point, early point in the championship but round number two race three 10 point lead over your main championship rival who was uh, Adris has crashed out so yeah no point pushing at exactly the moment that. exactly that round three nothing silly you've got P2 comfortably you're seven well 5.7 seconds ahead Alex Skrieg is seven seconds now ahead of Yari Ruiz in third place yeah Lucas Tulovic maybe he just thinks right I've seen my Main championship rival after round one, crash out after pushing a little bit too hard. You know what, I'm just going to sit here, take P2 and walk away with extending my championship lead. But we'll see. 1.4 seconds is now the gap as we see a nice slow motion replay of your race leader going into turn one. The fast left-hander at the end of the front straight with 10 laps to go. There's his pit board. Lap nine, nine to go. P1, of course, means P1 and then they'll have a... The gap update back to Lukas Tudovic was 1.4 at the end of the last lap. It looks like it's just held station so far this lap. So this is interesting. As soon as it starts tipping over the sort of 1.52 second mark, then you can really sense that, yeah, okay, Alex Skrieg has definitely got the pace here or Lukas Tudovic is just comfortable in second place. So we'll see how that plays out in the last nine laps. Oh, and this lap, as you were saying, yeah, the gap is sort of maintained. I'm not sure, maybe... A Tulovic is coming back ever so slightly on the race leader. Now, last lap round, Esquik was nine tenths of a second faster than Tulovic. We'll see what the times are to come across the line now to click off another lap. Nine laps remaining, and yes, that time round, it was only, well, less than a tenth of a second in it, but that time round, Tulovic was a tenth of a second quicker than Alex Esquik. So it was a 36 0 from Tulovic and a 36.1 from your race leader, Alex Esquik. And here on camera now is your, well, Third place position, podium position at the moment, that is Yari Ruiz, and he's just consolidating that at the moment, just ticking off the laps. He's still setting lap times that are representative of, of uh, the race leaders, but he might have some pressure coming from Cardalus in the next few laps because last time round, he was half a second faster than the Spaniard in third spot. So Cardalus, after that so-so start at the start of the race, he's uh, now finding his feet and coming forward and challenging for the podium position potentially in the next few laps. Yeah, Cardalus, an experienced rider in this class, of course. He was here last year, uh, finished fourth overall in the standing. So after Lucas Tulovic, he's the next most quickest rider coming into uh, this year's championship. And he was on the podium in Portimao last year in second place. So Cardalus obviously can see the podium, P3 right in front of him, 1.4 seconds behind, the same as Lukas Tulovic is to the leader. This is Alex Toledo, just missed out on a podium as we mentioned back in Estoril. Doesn't look like he's gonna have a, too much of a say in the podium scrap, but he's only, I say that, he's only 2.4 seconds down. So if there's any mistakes or any tire degradation worries in the final few laps, then Alex, Alex Toledo is well placed to pick up the pieces. 
is. Now, what is the gap over the line? Eight laps to go. Alex Skrieg between Lucas Tulovic is 1.1 seconds. So when the gap dropped to 1.4 seconds, Liam, maybe we missed a mistake off camera or something for Lucas Tulovic because it's proven that Tulovic does have the pace here. Um, he's let a screen go by 1.4 seconds, but in the last couple, of last couple of laps, he's reeled him in by three tenths. Yeah, it was, uh, must have been a mistake off camera as we didn't see, but yeah, last couple of laps, it's just edging ever closer to your race leader. Now, if he has enough time to do that, it's only a tenth here, a tenth there, might not be enough time with eight laps to go to catch and put a pass on Alex Eskrieg, but this, the gap looks like it's staying station at the moment so far around this lap, but these two are in an absolute class of their own up front at the moment. They are, well, 9.6 seconds ahead of it. Uh, Reed's back to, from a squeak back to Reed. And on the last lap there, Carda Lewis in fourth spot took another four tenths of a second as uh, Squeak there comes through the left hander, uh, sliding it ever so slightly. It looks absolutely beautiful out there, does a squeak. Bike control at its absolute max. But yes, going back to Carda Lewis, he's edging ever closer. The gap is now down to one second between himself and Reed. So we'll keep an eye out on that battle for third. So we've got a battle for the win. 1.1 seconds splitting them. We've got a nice battle for the podium as well in third place and fourth place. Card loose just edging closer lap by lap to Yare, Yare Ruiz. We'll have a look at the gaps across the line as another lap is completed. Seven to go. Alex Eskrieg leads over the line from Lucas Tulovic. Is it under a second? Yes, it, it is. 0.9 seconds then. Lucas Tulovic again quicker by a couple of tenths on that last lap. Um, so, yeah, Lukas Tudovic then isn't settling for second place. Certainly not. He's got the pace here. He's reeling in. Alex Eskrieg, little by little, lap by lap. And the gap is now back under a second. So Alex Eskrieg will know that. His team will be putting on his pit bog. He'll know the gap is around about a second. So this is going to be very interesting in the last six and a half laps to see if Lukas Tudovic can reel him in properly, but then reel him in there, reeling uh, Eskrieg in and making a move is a completely different kettle of fish. It is indeed. It's always uh, easy to catch someone in front of you, but trying to pass them is always sort of a little bit more difficult. But that, this is the sort of time in the race where experience comes into its fore because we've had Lucas Tilovic here for a number of seasons and he knows the game. But Alex Greek is only in his third Moto2 race here. Yes, he was in the, the Stock 600 class, but it's a completely different machine to these Calyx uh, Moto2 Triumph powered machines. So tire wear, tire degradation, also the physicality of the bikes as well. It will be a little bit different, even though these are top level athletes here in the Moto2 class. So it's going to be experience versus youth here. And sometimes experience in these conditions when it's really hot today can just come to the fore ever so slightly more. Yeah, absolutely. It will be working in Lucas Tulevich's favor that he's got the experience. This is his 58th start um, in the Moto2 European Championship. And like you say, it's Alex Eskrieg's uh, third start on a Moto2 bike, reigning champion in the Superstock 600 category. But as you rightly pointed out, Liam, completely different machine, completely different racing when you're back down in the pack and not leading the race. Number 13 then, Matteo Reto, he leads teammate Tommaso Marcon over the line and they've got Piotr Bierczykowski um, with them for company in P6, P7 and P8. So that's a good battle then for sixth place between the trio. Juan Rodriguez is still leading the Superstock 600 category. He's just ahead of Mikel Pons on track as we turn our attention back to the race leaders. Five and a half laps to go. Lucas Tudovic has got to start getting busy. He's got to start reading them in even more. He didn't take too much time out of him on that last lap. There was half a tenth oh, in them. Bit of a front um, end wobble from a squeak going into the left-hander there. He's having a few, a couple of moments <laughs> he's there. moving yeah, it around, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. The back, oh, oh that's kicking it big time. So I don't know if he's maybe just losing tyre already. It looks like he is, mm. to be honest. So he's had a front end wobble. He's had a, a rear end wobble coming at the same corner. And what we're looking at here, just uh, into turn one for Yaddy Reeds. Is it going to be a slow-mo replay or is he going to make a little mistake or something? I think it's that riding style yeah. comparison down into turn one. So, yeah, hard on the anchors of the Moto2 riders. A couple of clicks down the gearbox and throw it in and then get it stood up and fired up into turn two. Uh, nice riding style comparison here for the riders down into turn one. A great corner on this great track here 
in Valencia. So another lap completed and we've got a change for the lead. So Lucas Tulovic is now leading the race. We missed that with the um, comparisons down into turn one. So we're not sure what happened, but Lucas Tulovic then is your new race leader. I'd love to get a replay of that to see what happened. Was it a mistake from Alexis Skrieg? We saw him run a little bit wide into turn 11, but not too much that would make him lose um, that much time, nearly a second loss there. Um, so yeah, interesting to see what happens there. Lucas Tulovic in the lead, Skrieg back into second place. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. It's uh, off screen completely there. So uh, here we go. Here's a replay. And oh, but he's just looking over his shoulder. Now, it's a, the fun in <laughs> games of like five, six laps ago again. And yeah, he just lets Lucas Tillovich go. Mm. So does that. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, very interesting indeed. What is going on out there between Tillovich and the Squeak? Well, there's only four and a half laps to go. So we'll find out in not so. A little bit wide <laughs> yeah, we'll there from a Squeak. Yeah, it yeah, is indeed. Now, the last lap, he was having a few moments through that left-hander. The front end was going, coming out of the corner, the rear end was going. So maybe he just thought, since Lukas Tilovic is catching me, I will drop back, check where he's stronger, maybe try and learn a few things off him as well. Or maybe that's all he can do. Maybe he just doesn't want to push too hard, lose the front like we saw from Senna Aegis at the start of the race. So it's a, it's a very risky strategy because Lukas Tilovic obviously had some decent pace, was quicker than... Um, Alex Skrieg for a number of laps and then sort of levelled out, but now he's let Lukas Tulovic through. If he can't bridge the gap, because he's not right on his tail, he's probably about half a second down, we'll come across the line and see what the gap is. As our timing screens update, yeah, 0.4 seconds, just under half a second. Um, so he's not right on his tail, he's close enough, obviously, but now with four laps to go, if Lukas Tulovic puts the hammer down, um, Alex Skrieg has just sort of handed him the race victory. So yeah, interesting tactics. Interesting to see what the riders say after the race when you interview the race winner, Liam, because this is, I'm not really seeing anything quite like this when it's not for a championship. It's the third race of the season and <laughs> Alistair Skrieg, obviously, in his third race. If he's sat behind Lukas Tulovic, he's obviously going to be learning plenty, of course, less experience on the Moto 2 bike, so maybe he wants to do that. Feels he's got something extra in the pocket, but Lukas Tulovic, winner of the opening two races, and if you've got tight aspirations, which of course Alex Esquick does, you do not want him to win the first three as the podium battle, the battle for third, lights up here. Can't lose right on the back of Ruiz. Is he going to look into turn six? Yes, he is. Backs it in that's nicely, does the Andoran. Gets it stood up and that's completed then. A pass completed for Card Luz. So the podium battle is fierce here. It's just between these two as well. Ruiz versus Card Luz. Card Luz getting the better it for now. Yeah, there must be. Oh, he's coming back at him as Ruiz. Oh, that is a tight lane. That's a fantastic move there. The door was just slightly ajar and there was no second invitation Ooh. needed for uh, Ruiz to come back through. So Cardalus has got uh, some work in his hands here. If he thought it was going to be an easy overtake, then he's going to have to think again because Ruiz is definitely not letting this one down because this, he's on course here for his first ever podium in the Moto2 class. So with just over three laps remaining, uh, Cardalus is going to have to, well, pull out everything he knows in Moto2 to try and beat the young Spanish rider. Just heard Lucas Tulovic and Alice Skrieg on the Triumph bikes whiz past our commentary box window. 0.4 seconds still in it, so nothing between them on that last lap. Alex Skrieg just a little bit slower, but not too much to worry about this time around. So, yeah, Ruiz versus Cardalus. Ruiz is going to fight to the death on this one, isn't he? Okay. He is... Eyeing up that first podium in the Moto2 class. Carl Luce has had podium pedigree here before, but he wants that first podium of the season. So this is a fascinating battle in Moto2 for the race victory and the final podium spot. It's going to go down to the wire. 0.4 seconds between Tulovic and Eskrieg and pretty much the same between these two riders. So here we go then. Ah, back markers then. Just getting a little in the way a little bit there, but not too much to worry about. Looks like the gap is staying stable at 0.4 seconds, doesn't it, Liam? Yeah, um, it's just um, stabilised, as you're saying, Elliot, at 0.4 seconds. There seems to be a couple of mistakes coming into some of the, the, the long corners from a squeak, just pushing the front a little bit, running a little bit wide. It might be his normal line, but it looks a little bit different to the lines he was running at the start of the race. So, But yes, pushing on a little bit, so we could have a, the front end bobbling again into turn at number 12, but then it looked like Tulevich running out wide a little bit as well. So these two are pushing really hard with just over two laps remaining. Turn 14. Is it going to come down to this on the last lap? Skrieg is uh, certainly closer this time around. He's made some ground there in the latter half of that lap. And with two to go, this is really on them between Lukas Tulovic and Alex Skrieg. 
It's got the back marker there, the number 25 on the Super Stock Machine. That's Thomas Strudwick, the British rider on Michael Laverty's Vision Track racing bike. So hopefully Strudwick can just yeah get out of the way. Well played there from the number 25. So Tulevic then leading Alex Eskrieg. Alex Eskrieg had a 0.4 second disadvantage um, to Tulevic. Now it's back down to 0.2 seconds. So if Eskrieg can play his cards right here, he let Tulevic through a couple of laps ago. Studied him for a couple of laps and now he's right back on his tail. So this could be planned to perfection for Eskrieg. It could be indeed. Now, if he was uh, playing around with Tulevic and just trying to make a bit of a, a race of it, then he's got to get moving on now because the gap is still stabilizing. Uh, well, it's gone back up to around about four tenths of a second. It was two tenths of a second at the start of the lap. With a lap and a half remaining, he's running out of time to try and pounce on your championship leader. And further back, the battle for third spot is still as hot as ever with Cardalus coming over the line just, ha just a tenth and a half of a second behind Yuri Ruiz. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that one as well because it's into the arc, two by two for the podium places. The top two, Tulevic, a squeak for the win, and then also Ruiz and Cardalus for third and fourth. Two corners and one lap to go then here in the Moto2 European Championship. The only race of the day, and it's been a fascinating race. Surprising tactics, to say the least, but now there's one lap to go and there's nothing to choose between Tulevic and Eskrieg. So last lap time then, Tulevic leads on to it. The number 11 of Eskrieg, what's the gap? It's going to be about 0.2, 0.3 seconds as they cross line. It's 0.3 seconds, there's lots of back markers coming into play here, so hopefully they can get out of the way, make it a nice, clean final racing lap and on Ruiz and Cardaloos, watch, they're just coming over the line now can't quite see the gap but the gap between them is 0.1 seconds in the final podium fight so then the super stock 600 riders get oh. out of the way just i think ah uh, just getting in the way there the blue flag should be waving so they should see them coming but tulovic i think this is helping him out a little bit yeah alex yeah. screen just getting caught up there behind the envy augusta um that's oh is he's, the been stuck, he's been stuck behind <sighs> their big time behind the envy augusta there so he's lost a few tenths of a second coming through the right-hander, but the battle for third has changed again. Cardalus has taken over um, from Ruiz there, so that's going to rage on for the rest of this last lap, but with half a lap remaining, your championship leader, Lucas Tulevic, on the Intact Racing Team Triumph Powered Machine. He's only got a few more corners to go. Eskrieg's challenge has come to nothing after he, well, unceremoniously sort of just let Lucas Tulevic through a few laps ago, so, but he's on course for his best result in Moto2. Three corners to go for your championship leader. He looks on course to make it three out of three so far in 2022. Round turn 13, then Lucas Tuvalich comes. Just turn 14 to go. The late breaking left hander, and no such worries for Lucas Tuvalich. He's going to make it three wins from three in 2022. Alice Escree will cross the line in second. Unfortunately, the last lap was hampered by some back markers through no fault of their own. But it is Lucas Tuvalich who wins 25 points from a possible 25 here in Valencia. Three wins from three. The German marches on in the 2022 Moto2 European Championship. It is Xavi Cardelus who takes third place from Yeri Ruiz. Bit of a gap there. Not sure what happened on the last lap between those two. Hopefully we'll get some replays of that, but it is Cardelus picking up his first podium of the season. Yeah, experience really paid off for both Tulevic and Cardelus at the end of that race. They're both managing the tires to perfection to still a podium for Cardalus and Tulevic to take his third win in a row. So once um, he starts winning, he can, he can never stop. He's on an absolute roll of form now, is Tulevic. Absolutely, yeah. Three wins in the three does not get better than that. Um, as we see the number eight of Marco Tapia across the line, he is the winner of the Super Stock 600 class in 10th place ahead of Alejandro Ruiz. So not sure what happened to Juan Rodriguez in the closing stages there. But your Moto2 European Championship winner, again, Lukas Tulovic. A fantastic race. Some strange tactics, it has to be said, between the two at the front after Senna Aegis unfortunately crashed out. Alex Eskrieg letting Lukas Tulovic by. And unfortunately for Eskrieg, after that, he wasn't quite able to fully bridge the gap and have another bite of the cherry into the closing stages. Tulovic experience paying off. You can see there Eskrieg on the number 11 bike looking a little bit frustrated. You can understand that, of course. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite a clean run onto the last lap. Some of the Superstock 600 bikes 
course, a little bit slower than these Moto2 Triumphs, especially in the Hondas that we use here. So unfortunately for Alexis Grieg, a race win didn't really prevail, but second place, nonetheless, good result. His best result in Moto2 after finishing third and seventh in Estoril. Xavi Cardeluz from fourth on the grid finishes third. Good ride from Cardeluz, the Andorran. Very experienced in this class indeed, and he picks up P3 after a DNF in race one in Estoril where he took out Bjorsha Bisikerski, but then bounced back with a P5. But this is his best result. Congratulations then to Lukas Tulovic and the Liqui Moly intact squad. Let the celebrations begin for those guys. A job well done again this weekend. Pole position. Fastest lap of the race. And victory does not get better than that. Full house for Lukas Tulovic. Dominating the early stages of the Moto2 European Championship. After finishing in third last year, of course, behind the Bosco Scuro duo of Alonso Lopez in second and Fermin Aldeguer, of course, in third at uh, first. They've gone on to pastures new in the World Championship. Can Lucas Tudovic do the same? I wonder. Not sure. We'll have to wait and see, of course, later on in the year. Card loose doing well. He's got plenty of GP experience. 34 GPs he competed in across 18, 19 and 20. A very experienced rider indeed for promo racing as he celebrates the podium. Interesting to see what Eskrieg uh, shakes his head there. I think he was just obviously disappointed with the last lap. Understandably so, but can't be too disappointed. Fantastic ride from Eskrieg. It was easy to crash out there. We saw a few riders, including Senna Agius, crashing out in tricky conditions. It's the height of the day here in Valencia and it's very, very warm indeed. Temperatures of around 31 degrees, track temperatures well into the 40s. So difficult conditions for these riders, but the finishers handed them, handled them well. Here it is then, a few laps from the end of Skrieg, leading by just under a second. And they yeah, just decided to sit up just before they got to turn 12 and that allowed Lukas Hulovic to go through. Um, yeah, obviously can't tell you why that happened. Uh, maybe Liam can ask, ask Lukas Tulovic about the tactics because we saw that earlier in the race, didn't we? But yeah, Skrieg just couldn't quite bridge the gap on the last lap and it allowed Lukas Tulovic to take victory once again in 2022. We'll be hearing from the German very shortly. Getting used to these Park Fermi interviews now, isn't he, in this, in this class? He had to wait a while. He had to wait 56 starts for his first win, but now three have come along at once for Lukas Tulovic stamping his authority on the 2022 championship. And of course, that's the only race of the day for the Moto2 European Championship. They'll be back in action in Barcelona on Sunday, the 12th of June. I'll be there with my colleague Jack Gorst, bringing you all the action at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. Can Lukas Ulovic make it four wins from four over in Barcelona? You wouldn't put it past him, would you, at the minute? We're going to hear from him very shortly indeed as... Some team members make their way down at the Park Fermi. Next up will be the Junior GP Race 2. We're on a slight delay after a red flag in the Hawkers European Talent Cup race. Just by 10 minutes or so, I think. Pit lane opens at 10 past 2 local time here for the Junior GP paddock. So we'll get the podium celebrations underway. We get the Park Fermi into underway very shortly. And then we'll be back in action for the final two races of the day. And here he is, Lukas Tulovic will be speaking to Liam very, very shortly. Lukas Tulovic, three wins from three races with a little battle with Alex Creek out there. Tell us about the race. Yeah, before we came here to Valencia, it was clear that this is not my, my best track on the calendar. Uh, I like more the, the fast and flowing sections. So uh, we knew it will be difficult here in Valencia, but we made impress impressive uh, steps. Over Saturday in qualifying, I, I was so impressed by my lap times and uh, fantastic job by my team, huge thanks. They, they gave me an incredible bike. I felt so, so good even on the track. I am, that is not my best. And today with Alex, the race was uh, really tough. He pushed a lot and the pace was 
was fast, but the tires dropped a lot and I was struggling so much with the grip. But at the end, uh, I don't know exactly what happened, why he fell back. So we won the race and I'm, I'm super happy. Thanks to everybody. And in German as well, please. Yeah, als wir nach Valencia angereist sind, war uns klar, dass es hier nicht so einfach werden wird, da das nicht meine beste Strecke im Kalender ist. Das ist mehr so schnelle, flüssige Sektionen. Und wir haben fantastischen Fortschritt gemacht über den Samstag, wo ein Zeiten, von denen ich selbst überrascht war. Und da ein riesen Dankeschön an mein Team, die haben mir ein fantastisches Bike wieder hingestellt. Haben mich sehr wohl gefühlt hier und heute im Rennen. Die Pace war echt schnell, mit Alex haben wir ein bisschen gespielt. Uh, hin und her, dann uh, die Pace ausgetauscht, Führungskilometer gewechselt und ich weiß nicht genau, was am Ende passiert ist, warum er zurückgefallen ist, aber wir haben das Rennen gewonnen und das ist was zählt und vielen, vielen Dank an alle. Congratulations. Thank you so much. His highlights then from the only race of the day in the Motor 2 European Championship and it was Lukas Tulovic starting from pole once again like he did in Estoril. Didn't get the whole shot that he would have been looking for. That went the way of Eskrieg with Tulovic there at turn two making his way to the front. Senderagius joins the leading duo at the front. This was the battle further down the field. Alex Toledo around the number 55 before the number 81 of Senderagius made his way to the front of the race as the top three broke clear from lap one couple of seconds turned into four or five seconds that got close there between Yeri Ruiz and here it is then the crash that ended Senna Agia's race from the lead down at turn 12 thankfully for the Australian he was up and okay the rookie impressing again here in Valencia after his double P2 finish next to real but unfortunately a DNF today Roberto Garcia crashing at exactly the same place Thankfully, he was okay. But this left the top two of Lukas Tulovic and Alex Escri to battle it away. Some interesting tactics. Not sure what they were. Couldn't hear Lukas Tulovic's interview. So it'll be interesting to hear what he said. Hopefully, you guys at home heard what he said, because I didn't. Um, and then Alex Escri sitting up again, allowing Lukas Tulovic to come through. And unfortunately, it wouldn't be Alex Escri today after that for the race win. That was Card Luce overtaking Yari Ruiz in the battle for the podium. But that was Ruiz returning the favour shortly after on the Andorran. Card Luce, though, eventually won out that battle to claim the final podium. But it was Lukas Tulovic who claimed P1 for the third time in 2022. Dominance once again for the German. He takes three wins from three. Alice Escri came home in second, 1.1 seconds down on the race victory, with Xavi Card Luce taking the final podium spot in third place. Here's the results then from the race here in Valencia for the Moto 2 European Championship. Tulovic winning from Alex Green and Card Luce. Jerry Ruiz just missing out on a maiden podium in fourth. Toledo, Marcon, Rato, fifth, sixth, and seventh with Bishikersky and Mikel Pons rounding out the top nine. Marco Tapia won the Superstock 600 class in tenth, head of Ruiz. Kyle Paz was twelfth, head of Kevin August. Dino Iozzo. Nicholas Seiber from the back of the grid claimed a point in, in this Superstock 600 class with Rycek and Van der Langmat 16th and 17th. They were the other finishers then down there. Unfortunately for Florov and Eduardo Montero, they crashed out along with Senna Agius and Roberto Garcia. Both of those guys going down at turn 12 to end their day in the gravel traps, but we saw them walking away all okay hopefully so we'll see the next time out in Barcelona so time for the podium then here in Moto2 first out will be Card Luce then it will be Eskrieg and then Lucas Tulovic Liam we didn't hear well I certainly didn't hear Tulovic's interview um, from Pat Fermi what did he say I'm sure, I'm sure he was very happy with his race uh, yeah I'm not sure if the listeners could here as well so what was Tulovic saying he was uh, indeed really happy with the race he said that he just couldn't hold the tires together whatsoever he was struggling out there for grip and he wasn't sure what happened with Alex's <laughs> Greek they were he, said he dropped back a little bit but couldn't couldn't give me an answer about what actually happened so for someone that was struggling out there with tire wear and couldn't really push a very good result indeed because he's obviously won the race but he said this is a good this is a good result for the rest of the season because this is actually one of the tracks he doesn't like quite as much he prefers fast and flowing so 
It's great to take this one off the board for the season. Well, there you go then. If Tulovic is winning on a track that he doesn't really consider a favourite for him or doesn't really naturally go well on, then beware rivals for the rest of the season. Eskrieg, second place here in Valencia from second on the grids. Best result in the Moto2 class. He looks a little bit downbeat, doesn't he? He wanted that race win. But there we go. Pedro Acosta handing Lucas Tulovic the race winner's trophy. Pedro Acosta yet to taste victory in the Moto2 class, but I'm sure that's not too far away as we it's get coming. set to hear the German national anthem. Ese aplauso. Congratulations then to Lucas Tudovic once again, race winner here in Moto2. And it is time to spray the bubbly for these guys. They've not got another race to worry about, so they can uh, let the celebrations begin here on Sunday here in Valencia. It's going to be a happy trip home, isn't it, for the Liquid Molly team once again. And Lucas Tudovic, fantastic podium as he marches on in the 2022 championship. Fantastic start, perfect start. For Tudovic this year, and he has emerged as the real favourite for this year's title after finishing third overall last year, of course, and then seeing two Boscoscuro riders, the Fermin out again, Alonso Lopez move up to the Moto 2 World Championship. We're going to get a rundown of the championship standings very shortly before the Junior GP class. You've probably just heard it through a headset, firing away out of pit lane, ready for their second race of the day. And then we'll have the final race of the day coming up after that in probably just over an hour's time with the Hawkers European Talent Cup. So here's the standings then. Lucas Tulovic, 75 points from 75. Does not get better than that. Eskrieg moves up into second place with second place here today. Sané just drops to third after his DNF. Toledo is fourth ahead of Rato. Cardlou sixth after his podium with Yari Ruiz, Kyle Paz and Montero completing the top nine. Tagliarini is 10th ahead of Sam Wilford, who unfortunately was missing today after his crash in Estoril. Tommaso Marcon is 12th ahead of Roberto Garcia, Nico Dianco and Jamie Davis completing the top 15. Bishkowski and Mikel Pons down there in 16th and 17th. Corey Tenku, the Brit, is just ahead of Carter Brown in the standings. And there's Hector Garzo, who unfortunately again wasn't here on Sunday after a qualifying crash yesterday, but we're relying on being informed that it's nothing serious. We'll just take a look at the stock 600 podium. They'll get their celebrations underway. Like we say, the Moto3 riders are just making their way round to the grid. So that will be up shortly. Stick around for that, because if the first race endings go by, then race two will be just as good if not even a little bit better the trophies then for the stock 600 guys they can get their celebrations underway as well Marco Tapia winning there on the top step Jan Rodriguez was winning the uh, stock 600 chase but didn't quite see what happened to him in the latter stages. He slipped down the timing screen, so no race win for Juan Rodriguez. But Marco Tapia there lifting the P1 trophy. Here we're going to have a look at the standings for the Super Stock 600 class. So Alex Ruiz is leading it with 70 points. Marco Tapia after his victory today is second with Seba in third. Yotso and Van der Langmaat in fourth and fifth. Thomas Strudwick, the Brit, is sixth ahead of Kevin Orgis, Rajcek and Jakobo Hoschuk former Northern Talent Cup rider down there, eighth and ninth position. Other point scorers in the series so far, Nestola, Florov, Zagedi. So that's it from Moto2 and Super Stock 600 here in Valencia. They will be back in action next time out in Barcelona. 
Stick around though, because there's two more races coming your way here in Valencia as Lukas Tulovic takes another victory in 2022. See you soon.